What's up, everybody? I'm back with a complete Railcraft tutorial. I'm joined by Eglinor, who will help me. I guess. Are you gonna help me? Are you gonna help me? Of course, you have nothing to say. Those goggles are ugly, by the way. All right. So this episode, we're talking about tracks, part four. Uh, the, by the way, this is Railcraft 9.12.2.0 on Minecraft 1.7.10 now it's really the 9.12 that's important the point two is just bug fixes and stuff finally part four in railcraft and we get to rails and this is a doozy there are a lot of rails that railcraft adds so this shouldn't be there it should be over there all right so of course we have the we're gonna start with the default rails and these first two should need no introduction and then we're also gonna we also have a few tools down here so we'll go ahead and start with the switch lever all right now we're fi really very familiar with this track and this should really if you don't know this go go play minecraft this is booster track so nothing really new here now this is cool this is the first new track that Railcraft adds, and it's a junction track. So we'll go ahead and grab a minecart. And now this does, this allows two minecart paths to cross each other. Fairly straightforward. Alright. Next is a switch track. Now, by just throwing down a switch lever, you can allow this to switch. Su much superior to the original Railcraft, I mean, to the original vanilla Minecraft. Now, as you can see, there's a little uh, texture, and so this will allow you to go straight, and then that will turn. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that. Should probably change it in order to demonstrate the other direction. Alright, awesome. Now, to change the direction of the track, of course, you can just right click with a crowbar. And now, it's a switch track the other way. Yeah. Now, there's this little uh, thingy on here. And if it's a white bar, that means you're going to go straight. And if it's an arrow, that means you're going to turn. And you can see, it just tells you which way you're going to turn. Pretty neat. And of course, this will change when you change the track. Now, the next up is the Y track. Now, this is very similar to the vanilla switch track idea. And, of course, the little arrow will tell you which way you're going. The only downside to this is you can't go straight across any direction. Now, let's say the railcraft, the switch track is not switched so as you can see this will make you go straight if a train is coming in this way it'll just switch it all right those are all the standard tracks so we'll go ahead and thanks 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 you know that really hurts my feelings all right so next up is the wooden track. Now this is basically the exact same that we just saw, but you'll notice that it's 30% the speed, so it's much slower. So let's go ahead and start making a comparison. So this is our standard track, and this is our wooden track. To see, we'll get another minecart. So this is the normal speed, and this is the wooden track. That's full speed. And here's the booster track, which acts exactly the same as regular booster track. Activated by redstone, we'll give the cart a boost. The junction track, once again the same as the one we just looked at so we're not really going to go into that same thing with the wooden switch track and the wooden Y track just 30 percent 
of the regular speed. So we're not going to go into those in too much detail. Next is the electric track. Now this is pretty neato Dorito. So we'll see some electric feeder unit and all this special toolage. So we'll let's go ahead and make a straight line here. There is not really a speed difference uh, on this track compared to the vanilla track. They're basically the same. The only difference is this has a third rail. That third rail, of course, for electricity. So let's go ahead and grab a electric locomotive from the last episode. It's not here. It's forsaken me. All right, so let's go ahead and grab an electric locomotive. Awesome. And we'll put it right on here. Bump it a little bit. There we go. So there are two ways to power the electric track. You can have an electric feeder unit connected like so. We're going to need a lever and an energy cube. Caps lock. All right, put that right there and then power this. And now our track is not powered. All right, MFSU then. It's meant for industrial craft. So we'll put some industrial craft in there. All right, now it should be powered. Okay. This all right, well, this gives us an opportunity to test out our electric meter. Now, if you right click, this will show the charge and the draw. So you can see it has a charge and it's not drawing any electricity. All right, so now our locomotive is all charged up. So, what this feeder unit does is it takes industrial craft electricity and subsequently universal electricity and turns it into railcraft charge which will power this track and so you can see it's just connected like so so we'll go ahead and make a quick little loop and it's all connected so it'll just run like that so what do we need this other stuff for so let's say you have a detector rail right here because you just want to detect stuff. And then you have another one right here. Well now this little bit of track, so if we sh this little this little bit of track is no longer connected to the electric line. So if we right click, you'll see that it dips in energy for a sec. And then it'll charge right back up when it gets on the regular track. So there are two ways we can power this. We can put another electric feeder unit, which would require another energy supply, or we can bridge this little gap. How are we going to bridge that gap? With wire support and shunting wire. So, we'll just go ahead and bust this out. Some wire support frames. Ah, so close. Go. There we go. So now, we've bridged the gap and we throw in some wire and so now this will receive energy as well and you'll notice that when the track is connected with wire from underneath there's a little picture on there to show you that and if this wire we talked about in episode 2 with machines about the turbine housing that this will out the turbine housing will uh, will output this electricity which we could feed directly into the tracks so we don't have to use this feeder unit. So that's just a, that's everything with the electric track. So now let's move on to the next track. We going to put all this up in the inventory. The next track is reinforced track and uh, by the way the electric track does have this junction track and everything as well and that will all stay powered just like the vanilla track so again I'm not gonna go over that again because we've already done that the reinforced track also has a junction track switch track and Y track 
just like the vanilla and it also has a booster track so let's go ahead and set up the reinforced track what's neat about the reinforced track is that it's blast resistant so this is perfect for those exploding TNT cards are going through a battlefield also this is 125 percent speed of the normal track so we'll go ahead and do an example there is the normal max speed and here is the reinforced max speed a little bit quicker there that's really all that you need to know about reinforced track pretty basic just quicker and it won't blow up now we get into the dangerous stuff high speed track this stuff will really jumble your ju really jewel your jumbles or whatever so high speed track looks like this and the top speed for this is 100 and 250 percent or 2.5 times as fast now this is a little more complex than just throwing a minecart and thwacking it with a crowbar we're gonna need this transition track now booster track is exactly the same as the regular booster but it will get you up to the max speed of high speed rails now these transition tracks are a little more useful and I'll show you why so we'll just set this up here then we'll set up some transition tracks it is important to note which way the arrows are pointing and we'll just set up 10 of these alright so now we have 10 transition tracks and then we'll throw in some regular booster high-speed boosters and then we'll throw in 10 high-speed transition tracks pointing in the other direction alright and then we'll make a turn now here's why you need the booster tracks let me just go ahead and I mean the, the transition tracks let's go ahead and put all this down all right so now all our track are power is all of our tracks are powered so let's go and break this right here and do a turn you see it gets up to speed oof and we just blew up when we tried doing that turn that's because is when you're on high speed you cannot turn or you'll blow up so we'll put the booster track back down and that's where these transition tracks come in if you're going in the direction of the arrow it'll get you up to max high speed but if you're going opposite in the direction of the arrow it will still boost you but only up to the regular max speed of vanilla track that way when you take a turn you won't blow up so that's pretty nifty so let's we'll go ahead and do this so you get up to max speed you're going twice as fast as normal and then we take a turn safely because of this transition track see Eglinor has experienced some high speed track and so, yeah, so when we hit right here we hit the opposite direction and it's just going to bring us down to normal speed now it's not going to slow us down once we reach normal speed this is still booster track it will just transition you to the regular stuff this is also important because when you are on the rail so if you just go try to transition to normal rail from high speed it'll also explode Or, if you run into an item just sitting there, then it will also explode. This is why it's dangerous. We'll go and wait for the server to catch up. Alright, the server's lagging a bit. Come on. Come on see there you go it explodes because it ran into the item all right so that's high speed track continuing on 
is the cool is the cool force track so we'll just go ahead and break this up and put that there so you're gonna need this feeder unit and you'll notice that it has these little X's but this one is bigger that is the direction of where the track will be emitted now, what do I mean by emitting track well this is what I mean by emitting track that was Now it'll just kind of carry on forever until it runs out of electricity. So by default, I mean not by default, it will emit forever until it hits regular old rails. So let's go ahead and put some rails here and grab a minecart. Yep, they're just regular rails. You can use them to make really nifty sky elevated track or bridge complicated ravines that you wanna to have to build through. So this stuff's pretty pretty cool. And of course if you turn them off. <laughs> ha! It'll disappear. Sweet! So those are all the regular stuff. Let's get into the nitty gritty. So let's go and throw this down. All right, so now we have these tracks. So these are the ones we'll go over first. For these, we're gonna need a steam locomotive again. And some water. And a fire stone. All right, so here's our steam locomotive. Let's go ahead and get that all set up. All right, that didn't happen. So let's get a lever and start having some fun. So there's our train going. And this is the first track. Oh no, there's a pit. Not anymore. Well, now this train isn't having a fun day. Uh, come on, get on there. Go. Come on, there we go. So let's get this suspended track going again. So this suspended track will just cross a nice little pit. Now it cannot turn, and it cannot go up slopes. Just a couple things to keep in mind, but it will go over a pit. So that's pretty simple. Next, the whistle track. When powered, this will make your train whistle. All right, so now we have the locomotive track, and this will change what state the locomotive is in, whether it's running, idle, or shut down. So by green, it will change it to running when powered. If we hit it with a crowbar, it'll change it to orange, which will change it to idle. You see that it slows down, and now it's idling. And if we hit it with a crowbar once more, it'll turn red, which is shut down. And last for this little portion is the limiter track. And you can't actually see what it's doing until you power it. And you see the whole thing turns red. And this will set the train to full speed. Now, oh, that's not really what I meant to do. Back here. It'll set it to three ticks of speed. Then it'll set it to two ticks. So let's go ahead and watch that happen. down to two ticks and then down to one keep it going and 
And if we do it once more, it'll go on the outside and it'll switch it to reverse. So we'll just go ahead and keep that on. There we go. On full speed. Alright, so that's those tracks. Let's carry on to the buffer stop track. Now this, let's say you just want to have a siding or whatever, is a nice little stopper that will keep the train from moving on. One way track, when powered will only allow things to go in the direction of the arrow. You see, nothing happens, and of course you can switch this with the crowbar. But now if I power it, huh, it won't let it pass. Unless, unless I switch the direction. So that's pretty useful. Directional detector track. If the cart is going in the indicated direction, it will emit a redstone pulse. Here I'll get a piece of redstone for an example. So, when the train cart comes through, nothing happens. But if I change the direction, now, it'll output a redstone signal. That's pretty useful. Now this is probably the most useful track that Railcraft offers, the locking track. So when it's not powered, it will stop the train. When you power it, it'll put it back in the direction it was going. And if this will work with minecarts as well. So here we'll go ahead and have the train idle. So if you have minecart come, if you have a minecart coming in. It'll lock the minecart, and when you power it, it'll boost the minecart in the direction that it came. Okay, never mind. It won't do that. It will just let it move. Now, train lockdown mode will do this for an entire train. So let's go ahead and make a little train here. So I was getting that confused with another feature of that track. So we'll go ahead and... Boom, swap that direction. So now we have a train going. And that is off. Sometimes it just doesn't update. Okay, so now it's on lockdown. And so if you just do this really quick, it'll lock down the next cart. Like so. But if you switch this to train mode, even if you just give it a quick pulse, it will stay powered until the entire train has passed. So now we're in holding mode, and we're going to let the train pass because this applies to minecarts more specifically. All right, so if you have a minecart come in, this will hold the minecart, and then when you power it, it'll boost it away in whatever direction it came from. So, the other direction. Awesome. If you do it to this, tr if you do it like this, it will do the entire train. <laughs> videos are more exciting with friends and as you can see it stay boot it stays boosted until the train is gone now we're in boarding mode so we'll go ahead and shut the train down or idle more specifically so now whatever direction this minecart comes in it will get boosted in the direction of the arrow and the next one We'll reverse the direction. Whatever direction this comes from, it will put it right back in the whatever direction it's pointing. So that's good for dead ends. And of course, with the dot in the middle, that'll do it for the whole train. So we'll let it coast on in. So it stops. So close, come on. 
All right, and then I'll boost it back, or it'll boost it forward. And sometimes with the train stuff, this will stay on. It's a little funky. Then finally, we're right back to the beginning. So those are all the modes of that. So that's pretty useful. It's a very useful track. We want to get it back going. And when you have the uh, regular lockdown, when you have the regular boarding mode or lockdown mode, that's very useful if you want to load one cart at a time. We'll talk about that a little more when you get into loaders. So we'll go ahead and clear some of this away. All right, next is the control track. So we'll go ahead and this can be, the direction can be swapped with a crowbar, just like everything else. And what this will do is it's not redstone sensitive. Well, redstone sensitive to the direction that it points. But what this will do is this will give a teeny boost in the specified direction. So it won't, it's not powerful enough to slow down something all the way, but it will just give it a teeny boost. So like if something is standing here and you have a train, cut, like a minecart coming through, uh, it'll boost kind of through like a cow or something and you can switch the direction with a redstone current. Next is a gated track, which is exactly what it sounds like, a track with a gate. So let's say you have a cow farm here and you have a train coming through. Well, now you have a gate on there. It won't connect with adjacent fences and you do have to do that because it is only one high and animals will try to jump over it well it's not one high but animals will still try to jump over it because they think it's one high and this can be opened with a redstone current or by hand and when you right click with a crowbar it'll change the direction that the fence goes <laughs> wait I wonder how it's running I right, gotta put this back so they don't crash Alright, the gated one-way track is just like the one-way track, but it has a gate. So this is useful for when you have, say, animals right here. It'll help boost the cart through so it doesn't get jammed. So yeah, it's just a one-way track combined with a gate. Hmm. I'm gonna actually... Never mind. Next is the embarking track. So we'll go ahead and show you what this does by putting the train on full speed and having me stand right here. It'll teleport you into the minecart. So if I'm just standing right here, it'll teleport me right in. And if you right click on it with a crowbar, you can change the radius. It's pretty neat. So yeah, just right clicking on a crowbar change the radius of what it teleports you to. The disembarking track is the exact opposite in which it will disembark you. Only when it's powered, of course. And if you right-click it on a crowbar, it'll change the direction which it disembarks you. So, dwink, dwink, dwink. We've all been disembarked. So that's a pretty neat train, especially when people are riding a train that you don't want them to ride. Doink. Oh, I got on just... Oh wait, I didn't power that. There we are. Doink, doink, doink. That's pretty cool. That's good for, that's good for stations and stuff. Alright. Next is the coupler track. So for this, we're going to shut this down. And... Yeah, I'll just leave them there. All right, so the coupler track has three modes: it has decoupler mode, auto coupler mode, and of course regular couple. So we'll demonstrate the auto coupler. As as you can see, it just separated all these minecarts. If I thwack a Eglinor cart and a Blitzbrig cart and an empty cart, they're all separated because of this. Auto coupler is pretty interesting. in which well, the way it works is it will automatically couple any trains that come in contact 
So now, if I swap the direction of this. Nope. Oh, it helps if it's powered. Come on, switch. Switch. There we go. So see, now it's a train again. And so to go into more detail in the auto coupler mode, we'll go over here. This is a new, uh, a newer feature, the auto coupler, and I personally actually updated the wiki, the Railcraft wiki on this, because it was not up to date. So what this will do is when a cart passes over a powered automatic coupling track, it will just set it to couple with the next cart that it bumps into. So now you can see that they're coupled. The difference between this and the regular coupled track is when it becomes, when it goes over it, it couples with nearby carts. So there's a slight difference. Auto coupler will just kind of, whenever, whatever cart they bump into next, they'll combine with. Hey, come on, why isn't this going? There we go. Alright. Now for the, f oh wait, this this one other track. This acts just like the suspended track, but you cannot modify it, and this will output whatever entities are on there through. So it'll just drop them right down, similar to the disembarking track, but it'll just drop them straight below. So let's go and see what happens. Let's break. Blink. He just fell into the hole. So that's good if you want to drop players or people or animals into a pit of doom all right now for the final four priming track which we talked about a little bit last time launcher track which is really fun and elevator track now these two are have the same texture as reinforced track for a reason so let's go ahead and break up this well actually we'll put this right over here so the priming track when powered by redstone will ignite a primable cart which are all those wooden carts we talked about as well as a TNT cart so let's go ahead and grab a wooden TNT cart of course I grab it and then cancel it out with with bedrock so if we power our priming track and throw a TNT cart over there It'll prime the TNT cart and blow it up. Now what's pretty interesting is if you right click this with a crowbar, you can actually set the fuse. So we can set this to zero ticks and it'll blow it up instantly. So that's pretty fun. What's even more fun though is the launcher track. Now this is crazy. So let's go ahead and get one of them in here. The booster track. All right, so your Eglinor, why don't you get in there? Someone get in there. Come on, there we go. Just hop on it. There we go. Now. <laughs> And away he goes. And that's what the launching track does. Is that boot it launches the cart. And of course if you right click it with a crowbar, as you saw me do, you can change the force. So we'll go ahead and set the force. Uh, we'll set it to five. When combined with a priming track, this gives you a quick and easy TNT cannon. And that's why they're on reinforced rails. So that's pretty cool. The highly configurable TNT cannon. Alright, last that we're going to talk about in this episode is the elevator track. And this stuff is really neat. Just like most of the other tracks in this. So, if you have an elevator track like that, and you build right up to it, You can make that cool little 
thing and you power it the cart will just go right up and you see it just sticks there because it needs more track but yeah it'll just boost right up now it is more complicated than it seems at first because I purposely did that this boost this track will actually go as high up as you could possibly wish it to so we'll go ahead and bring this on over you notice that it's not connected but that's not really a problem it'll still go on there let me just power it so let's we'll throw that on there you see it'll go right up but it will only go above one where you power it so you can see up if I do this I can create a little section and when it's unpowered it will allow a train to travel down it move Eglinor and and so like that the train will just go down come on <laughs> that one kind of spun now what's really neat about this is it as he's demonstrating also is a ladder but it's more than just a ladder you can also do stuff like this like I'm about to show you right here now if you leave it only powered to right here it will actually go to whatever level you power it to that is why the lever does one above so you can just easily build it right off wherever you have a lever and then dispense a minecart from there so if I power this throw a minecart on there it'll go right up there what's cool is if I do this remember it goes down on an unpowered up on powered that's pretty cool and you can use this to make really intricate elevators <laughs> so that's pretty neat and that's the elevated track now there is one more track the routing track but we're gonna talk about this in the next episode which is all about routing a crowbar can also be used to turn a chest which is something that I did not know until I accidentally did it a few times so, hope you guys enjoyed this track episode. Definitely a lot of stuff, a lot of cool tracks. See you guys in the next episode where we talk about routing. Now, as always, I'm on my server, and there's a link in the description below on how to join. We have a lot of cool staff. See you guys next time.